Okay, so just remember that part as well. Uh, the other thing is we want to extend that same courtesy to the animals, all right? Uh, some of them are not brave creatures, so if you try to be too friendly and try to touch them or pet them, and that animal happens to get scared, you know what animals do when they're scared, right? It's true, yeah, a lot of them are going to poop if you've scared them, uh, and then somebody next to you might as well. So let's just try and keep this a very dry show if we can. Uh, and now that we got our only serious warning out of the way, would you guys prefer to start with the scary animal or the cute animal? What are we in the mood for here? What do we want? Scary. We had like zero cute people. All right, perfect. So well, that's perfect. So as far as scary goes, uh, I'm not afraid of any of the animals that I work with, but I can guess what most people that visit here are afraid of. Right? Everybody's afraid of either eight legs or they're afraid of no legs. So I'm going to bring this thing out. Everybody should be able to guess what this is right away. All right, are we ready? What is it? No, it's not a snake. It's a... It's a snake. I'm totally missing it. All right, so this guy right here is known as the northern pine snake. Now, pine snakes are in the Pituophis genus. So if you're out west, you have these. They call them a bull snake. Uh, some people call them a gopher snake. Uh, it depends on where you're from. But here, east of the Mississippi River, we have pine snakes. They spread from New Jersey all the way down to Georgia and Alabama, where they meet the Florida pine snake. And you can guess where that one this range extends all the way down into Florida. Now, they're called a pine snake because they live uh, in the over 93 million acres of longleaf pine forest that used to extend throughout most of the eastern U.S. It was quite literally our redwoods here. Uh, but that was all cut down about 100 years ago, almost all of it, uh, for the logging industry. So a lot of the animals that lived in those habitats have disappeared from the environment. Uh, and when it comes to snakes, it's kind of difficult to get people to want to get excited about their conservation. Everybody wants to save the charismatic, cute animals. Nobody wants to save snakes and insects. But they are just as important to us especially snakes here in Florida. And here's why, look, this guy's in the middle of the food web. So he gets eaten by everything, right? Every predatory animal looks for these guys as a meal. And the reason why is a snake is not a very tough creature, all right? A bite from this snake would hurt about as bad as a bite from a fish with the same size head. So, ah, all right, so. Uh, and then you also see it's moving around as if it's a boneless creature. It's only achievable by having over 300 very small, extremely fragile bones within their body. So a small child steps on this snake, it's dead. Uh, so that's why whenever you see a snake, once they notice that you're looking at them, they go to their favorite method of protecting themselves, looking as scary as possible. Uh, that is why you will never find a snake in the wild that's going to behave itself like this one. They're going to hiss. They're going to rattle their tail, and then they'll do these bluffs. They're these very exaggerated, not accurate strikes that they want you to see. And I want you to keep this in mind, because snakes, as hunters, are very stealthy animals. If they want to bite something, it's fast, it's quiet, and deliberate. So anytime you see a snake making any type of commotion, it's afraid of you, and it's hoping that you'll leave it alone. And if you do that, I promise the snake isn't going to hunt you down and eat you. Uh, and when it comes to snakes, again, being in the middle of the food web means that everything below them that they eat is important uh, because they remove a lot of pests that carry diseases, most importantly rodents. Now, we all know that rats can be eaten by snakes, but keep in mind that rats spread diseases that spread to us. And here in the United States, it's been proven that Lyme disease, the disease that's spread on ticks that go from deer to rodent to human, are increased in areas where people have killed a lot of snakes. And that's why in the northeastern U.S., where the majority of the timber rattlesnake population has been killed off, they have record numbers of people catching Lyme disease. So just remember, killing snakes kills people in the long run. Uh, the only good snake is a live snake. So what should you do if you see a snake? I ask you take a bird watcher approach. All right, you know what that means. You see a cardinal fly and land in your yard. You don't run out there with the shovel and beat it to death. All right. If you see a snake in your yard, treat it like a bird. Oh, look, there's a snake. Guess what? It's going to continue on. It's not looking for people to hunt down and eat. Uh, it's just trying to find rodents, and if it's in your yard, it's trying to help you by getting rid of them. 
And if you have a snake in your yard this big, you've already lived together for between three to 10 years and it hasn't killed you yet. So the day you notice it shouldn't be the last day of its existence. Just keep in mind how easy they are uh, to live alongside. They want nothing to do with you. And with all that being said, you might be wondering that how do people get bit by venomous snakes? I mean, here in the US alone, we have about 7,000 animations a year, every single year. Well, my guess is that it has to do with the demographic of people getting bitten by these snakes, over 90% of which are men aged 14 to 40 that are under the influence of alcohol when they make it to the hospital for their anti venom treatment. So more than half of those bites are above the waist. So that is 100% not an accident to try to pick it up, kill it, grab it, whatever it may be. So just remember, when you guys see a snake, uh, to just leave them alone. And remember what I said, take the bird watcher approach. Now, I could talk about snakes all day. Clearly, I love these things. But you can see this girl, she's trying to wrap things up. So I'll put her back into her... I'm not used to anybody laughing at that. That was weird. <laughs> I'll put this girl back in her home. And I'll bring out our next animal, who's actually another very important disease-removing creature from our environments. And that would be my good friend, Mr. Jimmy Talon. That's right. If you guys look in the back of the stage here, you'll see we have our Eurasian eagle owl. Uh, and Jimmy uh, is a bird who really works whenever he wants to. So I'm going to go in there and ask him if he wants to come out. And if he does, then he's going to jump from his platform to his perch that's closer to the door. And then at that point, he'll climb onto the glove. Now, let's say I go in here and I ask Jimmy to come out and he doesn't want to hang out. That's okay. It's just as entertaining for you guys to watch me getting attacked by a Eurasian eagle owl. So it's just fun. So let's see what Jimmy wants to do here. Jimmy? Okay, we got the double eye blink here. He didn't wink at me. That's good. I'll try and translate what Jimmy's saying for you guys as I walk in. All right. The tail and the ears are up. Okay, that was a yawn. <laughs> are you tired, bud? These little chirps are him asking for food, and now he's hissing at me. We all know what that means, right? It means, I love you. All right, come on, Jimmy. Oh, uh, now he's hooting, actually. This is pretty cool. This is a call that uh, you don't want to do to owls. It's a mating call. So, <laughs> for those of you hooting at the owls today, congratulations. <laughs> you may now kiss the bird. All right. Come on. Come on, Jimmy, come on. Okay. So look, buddy, we got a big crowd of people here. They're all excited to see you. Can you wave hello? Good job, buddy. Good job. All right, so being a Eurasian eagle owl, you can guess where he's from, right? They're as far north as the Arctic Circle and as far south uh, as northern Africa and the Saudi Arabian Peninsula. Uh, so these creatures don't really look for a specific habitat when they're looking for a home. They're just looking for a tall perch. It doesn't matter if it's a tree, the side of a cliff, the top of a building, they do not care, right? You often find them living right alongside people uh, because it's very easy to hunt near us because everywhere you find human beings, you find our best friend in nature, the rat, right? Uh, so these guys are great to have around because they eliminate a lot of those pests. But keep in mind, when it comes to our allies in nature, that you should never use a rodent pesticide for the reason that it poisons the food web, the entire environment, not just the rats. Everything eats rats. And then once you kill off the owls and hawks and all the other stuff that was eating the rats that you were poisoning, and then those rats build up an immunity and all those other animals are gone, you have a serious rat problem. It happens every time. Uh, so when it comes to these creatures, don't make the mistake of thinking he's like every other owl that can only eat a rodent. These guys can eat quite large prey. In fact, the Eurasian eagle owl has been observed hunting and eating prey the size of a red fox. And the way they do that is by being the most powerful species of owl on the planet. You'll notice the very sharp talons there that most predatory birds have. But Jimmy has a grip strength between 500 to 700 pounds per square inch. So my finger and thumb here, he can crush those bones very easily if he wasn't in a good mood. Uh, but really what this comes down to is to show you that when they get into a fight, well, it's not really a fight. They just land on something, squeeze the vertebrae, and it's dead. The fight is over. And that's why nothing really messes with owls. But the main reason that there is no competition for them at nighttime, right? What else is flying around with owls? Pretty much nothing, okay? And the reason why is that silence, all right? Owls 
are completely silent when they're hunting. Uh, now, when he's flapping his wings, it doesn't make any noise like it would another bird. Because of that fluffy layered look that you see to their feathers, that organization cuts out all the wind noise of flight, uh, and so do all the frayed ends of those feathers. So if he does flap his wings, oh, you look like you want to fly away. You better not fly away, mister. You flap your wings in one spot. Okay, that kind of works. So again, you can see him doing it, uh, but you don't really hear anything because of that layered look that they have. Uh, and that means that even if it's a cold winter night when sound travels the furthest, even if he is hunting something like a rabbit that are known for their great sense of hearing, it doesn't mean anything because he's not making any sound for that animal to hear anyways. So because of this reliance on their strength and on their silence, owls have never had to develop any type of complex problem-solving abilities. You get what I'm saying, right? There is no such thing as a wise old owl, all right? Uh, somebody as wise as an owl will make that up to feel good about themselves, I guess, right? But it really goes to show that these animals have been successful without intelligence. They've just been successful uh, with strength, their silence, uh, and that has been all that they've needed. So it goes to show that you don't really need to think too hard to be successful. Isn't that right, Jimmy? I know, look at the look on his face, though. Come on, he either looks like he knows the answer to every question in the world, or there's like six brain cells in there bouncing around, <laughs> like the DVD waiting thing. So <laughs> uh, we'll go ahead and put Jimmy back in his home, and I have time to bring out one last animal that Jimmy really hates and doesn't like to spend time with, so he has to go back into his home before I bring out my good friend Fluffy. And I just noticed that I didn't latch the door there, so we might have to take a peek in here for a second. Perch. Good boy. All right. So, <clears throat> I didn't notice Fluffy in the room, and uh, I don't see him back here. Can we do a quick check under the bleachers? I don't want to alarm anybody. But if this thing got out, we ought to find it quick. All right, because they can cover a lot of ground. I'm seeing a lot of sandals at the Gator Park. A lot of sandals. I'm messing with you guys. Come on, look at that. Come here, Fluffy. All right. So this is my good friend, Fluffy. Now, I know everybody's confused. Why would you name an alligator Fluffy? Nobody wants to meet Arm Ripper, all right? So you got to pick a cute name like Fluffy the alligator. Now, Fluffy is an American alligator. Remember that there are only two species of alligator left, the American alligator and the Chinese alligator. They're both very closely related to the caiman, as well as the crocodiles, gharial, and temistema. And this group of reptiles is known as the crocodilia. And the crocodilians are an ancient group that has a fossil record with a history going back over 240 million years. Uh, so remember, guys, this is not a dinosaur, right? It is way older than a dinosaur. It used to eat the dinosaurs, and it survived the meteor that killed them all, so way cooler than a dinosaur ever was, right? Uh, and today they survive the same way their ancestors used to, as an ambush predator that lives at the water's edge. And with every animal needing water for survival, they just sit back and eat delivery their entire lives. Animals offer their faces to the water's edge to take a drink, where these crocodilians can grab them, pull them underwater where they can hold their breath for over two hours, and then they'll either crunch them up and swallow them whole, or if they need to, they can rip animals into smaller bite-sized pieces. But if you're looking at an alligator, and you look at them in their native habitat, all around them you find animals that they can swallow in one bite. Turtles, fish, birds, frogs, snails, snakes, possums, armadillos, raccoons. And the reason why they have this big rounded snout is because it's better for them to have a big scoop for catching all those small prey animals than it would be to have a face shaped more like a crocodile's head, right? Now, a crocodile, they're the ones that have a much more pointed snout. And the reason why a crocodile has that point at their snout is so that a crocodile can kill something big and then rip it into teeny little bite-sized pieces that are very easy for them to swallow. And that's why you see them ripping apart wildebeest and zebra. So knowing that one of them can shred a water buffalo, and then the other likes fishies and turtles, it sounds like crocodiles are a little deadlier than alligators, right? Uh, and you'd be correct in knowing that. Now look, alligators are not gentle, friendly creatures, but they don't go out there to hunt and eat people, all right? Crocodiles do, and that's why when you examine the amount of people killed by alligators versus crocodiles, that you have such a big difference. Alligators have killed a total of 36 people since 1970. 
So that's not even one person a year on average killed by the American alligator. Where crocodiles kill and eat between two to three hundred people every single year. All right, so I think we all know right now which one we would rather go swimming with. And that is neither one. Nobody wants to say no? Okay. Uh, remember, opportunistic predators. So if you don't want to get killed, don't give them the opportunity to kill you. All right? Out of the 36 people that have been killed by an alligator, 30 of them were in the water at nighttime. And now look, everybody's looking around going, what kind of person goes in the water at nighttime? You already know the answer to this. Remember what I said about venomous snakes? Most people attacked by alligators are men age 14 to 40 while they're under the influence of alcohol. So don't go in the water at nighttime and you're not going to get attacked by an alligator. The only other way to get attacked by an alligator is by approaching an alligator that's been fed by someone else. Whether you or someone feeds an alligator, all it takes is one piece of food. And they're going to remember for the next 60 to 100 years of their life, people equal food. And if they go to somebody 5, 10, 20 years after you fed it, and that person doesn't have food, you're going to make food, right? So just remember, never feed a wild alligator. It's not a smart idea, especially because they prefer to hunt smaller prey. So if you feed a wild alligator, it's probably not attacking an adult. It's likely that it ends up attacking a small child, uh, or even worse, it could attack somebody's dog, right? So just remember to never, ever... Parents laughed a little too hard at that. It was not okay, all right? Uh, so just remember, guys, don't feed them. Don't swim with them. And the only way to make an alligator angry is by getting too close. So if you see an alligator, leave it alone, right? Now, most of you guys are not going to walk up to some big, giant, scary alligator. But keep in mind to respect the little baby alligators, too, all right? When they're born, they're about that small. They're real cute. They're real adorable. You're going to want to get up close. Just use the zoom on your camera. Uh, because if you get too close to a baby alligator, they get scared, and their only way of protecting themselves is to call for help. And we all know a bigger alligator is a lot scarier than a little baby. So as soon as you see a baby alligator, keep in mind that the adults are nearby. By the way, this one is not a baby alligator. Fluffy is about four feet long, and with a growth rate of one foot per year until they're six, we can assume this alligator is about four years old. They move out of the nest by the time they're like two to three feet long, so about two to three years old. And the reason why is if you look at this alligator, he could very easily eat a fresh hatchling. So his parents don't want alligators that are too big around the younger siblings. So he has to move out by his third birthday. And if he doesn't move out on time, his parents are going to kill him and eat him. And so kids, when you turn 18, you get a job. Right? You go to school, you get out of the nest. And you don't know your mom and dad that well, right? Uh, but keep in mind one more time. You see a baby alligator, leave it alone. If you get too close and they start to call for help, you might want to pick up the pace. And for those of you that have never heard a scared baby alligator when they call for help, you'll hear it all the time. At nighttime, you go out by the water's edge and you'll hear this sound. You ready? <clears throat> Is heard that? Okay. All right, uh, it sounds like this. It's called the gator grunt. So if you hear that noise, you should maybe 35% survival rate, that's it? <laughs> Run, all right? Tell someone else to stop, drop, and roll if you're not a runner, okay? Uh, as long as you leave these guys alone, they're not hunting and eating people, all right? There's more than five million alligators in the U.S. right now, most of them right next to people. So if they wanted to eat someone, they could eat a person every day, right? And are they doing that? Definitely not. They're way too lazy. They'd much rather just swim in the water, eat some small bite-sized food, and then lay in the sun and work on their tan. Isn't that right, Fluffy? He's like falling asleep the way I'm rocking him like a baby. I know, look at him. He looks all cute and cuddly. He's all adorable. Everybody wants to hold him and hug him and kiss him. That is dangerous. You could get hurt. So we're definitely going to let you do it anyways. Uh, my good friends across the walkway let you meet Fluffy for free. And the only thing they ask is to take your picture. And it's because our insurance company wants a number uh, at the end of the day of how many of you guys live. So uh, other than that, thank you guys very much for hanging out with us. I know I had fun talking to you. And Fluffy wants to say one last thing. See you later, alligator. Thank you guys very much. Good job, Fluffy.
Fantastic. Thank you guys very much. Good job to Fluffy. If you did want to meet Fluffy, you can follow him right this way. If you're too scared to touch the alligator, that's what makes it funnier for everybody else. So just do it anyways, all right? Thank you guys again. I hope to see you at the next show is our 3 o'clock alligator feeding. Take care, everybody. Yeah, that's just past the playground on the left-hand side.